Hi, I'm Joey Pins. People ask me, how did I lose 130 pounds? The quick answer is always discipline. I started my business, wasn't paying attention to my health, was eating too much, you know, drinking too much sweets. My daughter was born. Next thing I know, I'm pre-diabetic, I have hypertension. I knew something had to change. Discipline. I, like many of you, have faced many challenges in your career, in your family, in your life, in your faith. How did you attack them? How did you approach them? How did you solve them, hopefully? It all had to have some degree of discipline. I'm also asked, how did you found and start a tech business that lasted over 25 years? Discipline. I was committed to it, enjoyed technology, didn't enjoy some aspects of it, but knew it was necessary. Discipline. Our podcast mission, how do we use discipline to better ourselves and society? Join me, please, as I talk to interesting people and discuss how they use discipline in their family and their passion and their careers and how it helped them. Our podcast vision, growth through learning from others. Joey Pins Discipline Conversations. It will be light and serious. Join us, please. Thank you for consideration. Keisha, good morning. Good morning. So nice to see you. It's nice to see you. What are some of the challenges you have this week here at Connect Life Secure? Challenges? Yeah. Not getting to meet everybody. Mm. Not getting to spend as much time with everybody. Um, you know, I think that's the most challenging. How do you balance which sessions, who to talk to, but good challenge. And, and some of your goals then are the ops. So goals. I love now knowing that I have this exposure to be able to meet partners. So my mm. goal is to be able to kind of just talk to them and hear their challenges. I think I'm more interested in the MSPs that are smaller and more startup because those are the ones I feel I can add more value to from a what do I do on a people side of things. Uh, so my goal was to try and meet as many of those as possible. And HR is kind of, you know, when I started my MSP, it was like, oh, do we really need it? And then once you start getting employees, you need it. Mm -hmm. You know, so what kind of questions? they lean on you for some advice? Yeah, about how to find talent, how to retain the talent, how do you performance manage those, you know, especially with some of these smaller startups, if they're 13 employees or 30 employees, and they're like, what if I've got someone that just isn't pulling their weight, the whole team sees it, but they don't even know how to manage through that, how to exit employees, or how to coach them up, and so, so those conversations, what are they allowed to do, depending on the state that they're located, which jurisdictions, can't talk this morning, um, but yeah, so just those types of things. And you know, just how to build everything out, which is their org design look like, you know, layers and all of those things. Mm, and it's so great that ConnectWise is sharing you with the MSPs, right? Because you're, you know, you're working with it with ConnectWise, big organization. What we talked last night, international. You're taking a big trip to India soon. Yes. We have over twelve hundred colleagues there. Colleagues there that that you have to manage. So it'd be very nice, you know, ConnectWise could just kind of look, just focus on us, but they're saying, hey, come to our events and let MSPs learn from you. That's great. Yes, yes. It's the value, and that's what I love is we have product, of course, and that adds value. That's what we do. But the fact that we also say, but you know what, there's other value, and that's one piece of it is mm. talk to our HR team. You can even get some, you know, kind of, like, I don't know, advice from finance and things. Just how should I structure mm. things? How should I approach this? I love the IT Nation grow and kind of that because – some of the MSPs I've talked to are like, you know, maybe we'll sell soon. But they haven't thought about what that means and what that looks like. Mm. And the people side of things counts for that, tax, all of these components. So I do love that there's value more than just a product. It's ConnectWise as a whole. And so, mm. yes, I, I do. It's exciting. And how, how should MSPs better engage with you? You, got, you have sessions this, this breakout or, or this? Not here, but I will have sessions at Evolve. At Evolve. Yes, yes. Uh, Evolve, that's right. In August, yes. that's right. And they'll be on, like, like some of the topics will be? Some of the topics will be on talent. Uh, we mm -hmm. did have a survey that went out, kind of what are some of the top HR topics you'd like to hear about. Mm. So, you know, we're looking at that, kind of the responses to see, and then I'll structure. But a lot of it is on the talent, especially how to 
attract and retain talent. Mm. That's a challenge for even big companies right now in general, but that's one of the hot topics. Um, And then performance management was one that I really saw. So Mm. we'll delve into that for sure in the peer groups. So I think I shared this with you last night. The top three things that MSPs that that still keep them up at night, one is security, of course, and two is talent. You know, they're big... You know, these big companies, the Googles, et cetera, are taking some of their talent and how are they going to replace them? How, how can you help in that? Any advice? Yeah, because the big company comes out of Peel of saying, I work for Google, mm. I work for Microsoft. Mm. And sometimes when you're a smaller MSP and maybe your name's not out there, it's you've got to build that culture of pride. I feel so excited and I'm proud to work for this company, whichever company that is. And so really helping them understand Ah. what culture do I want for my company? How do I make sure I actually foster and cultivate that culture and make sure it spreads? And so the smaller you are, your resources are going to be different. You're not going to be able to do what Amazon and these companies do. But you can build your brand and make it strong so that anyone who works for you is so proud. And that's what goes up. That's what resonates. Word of mouth is strong. We all know that. You know, so... I always kind of start there. Mm, the culture. You know, when I first started my MSP, like, you know, if you don't create the culture, the culture will kind of create you. You know, so just, all of a sudden I started noticing things and that's not the way I want. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of notice it and make changes. It's really important. You have to fully understand it. And what, because you do have to know what matters to me, what's important. And I know it sounds sometimes to people it may sound cheesy or what have you, but it's not because right. it's really... Who are you and how do you want to work? How do you want to be seen? Same thing for the company. How do we want people to see ConnectWise? Just like you said, wow, they're making you available to MSPs yeah. and stuff. But that's something that we want partners to understand, partner first. And so I'm glad that that actually is what partners see. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing as what do I believe? How do I want to work? How do I want my employees to work? And how do I want to be perceived? Mm-hmm. And so as long as that's at the forefront, keep it. And then you hire people. Who fit that? Mm. I think people miss that sometimes because mm. they're looking for the technical skills so much. Can this person do this? Do they have experience with this software? But the culture piece is important. Will they be a fit? Do they believe in the same things that the company does and that I do as a leader or what have you? And you want to get good culture fits because they're going to help you build that. Mm. Leadership roles and roles throughout the company, the more you hire for the right culture fit, it's just going to spread. I had an excellent engineer and boy, he just turned into a cancer. And, uh, you know, the employees couldn't stand them. The service is so hard to let somebody go that's such a great engineer. But if they're just, they're going to be, they're going to pull people down with them. Yes. That's a battle that you hear all the time. So yeah. This person's been here for five years, ten years. They know all of the, you know, the software that's mm. so strong. Mm. But then you have all these other people that are unhappy. Now they're not motivated. They're right. not working as hard. You take that one person for every, let's say, 10, 15, 30 employees that are just like, this is just not for me, that spreads. To your point, cancer, it's toxic, it spreads, and then you have a really, really, really big problem on your hands because it gets big. You've got to be able to catch that early, and there are trade-offs, and that's a trade-off that I think, you know, business owners, leadership, you have to be okay making that decision. Yeah, I blame myself as being a poor manager because I should have seen it, noticed it sooner, and stopped it then. But so many times, the owners are just busy doing whatever. They're putting out fires. They're even working on tickets. They're working on other things. Yeah. But to maintain that culture, has got to, a pulse has got to be done. How, how, how do you maintain? Do you survey your team? How do you do that? How do you yeah. get a pulse? So you've got your surveys. And some, some companies now take the approach of you know even monthly pulse surveys mm. or engagement surveys, quarterly. I'm not a big fan of annual because I just feel like that's just not enough. You're right. hearing from them once a year and then what do you do with the information? But I always like to say, okay, you do your surveys. You want to get your feedback. It's, it's hard to get 100% of responses, but what are you doing with that information? And the important piece is making sure the employees know, okay, we're taking this and then we're going to put things into action. Hmm. Leadership has to actually look at those results. Right. Look at the data. What story is this telling us? And then how do we use this? And then with feedback. Give that back that we heard you. It seems like this is a problem. So this is what we're doing to rectify that. Because now that you put it into action, employees are like, wow, they listen to us. Wow. So I'm going to fill out that survey because I know they're listening. Mm. And then it's talking. I was uh, talking to Stephen Brown. Um, we talked about it. And I said, talk. Talk to your people. Listen mm. to them and talk to them. Because eventually they tell you. And I think leadership, we get into performance mode so much when it's working. We forget about the simple basics of have conversations 
with your people and you will you will find out what you need to find out. Mm -hmm. You just have to remember to balance that. Yeah, the surveys aren't enough. You've no. got to make them, yeah, you've got to make changes based on them. Right, because then they'll get the survey box. fatigue. Yeah, Yeah, survey fatigue, you have to check the box exercise. It's like, oh, I fill these out every quarter, but nothing ever changes. And mm. It's not that you can take every piece of feedback and, and change things, but you can make little tweaks, you can make adjustments, you can do things to show that, yes, we're listening to this. And some are going to be bigger initiatives, some are smaller and quick fixes, but you have to be able to make sure that employees understand why they're doing it. So many MSPs can't afford a full-time HR director person. I'm sure there's fractional agencies. What kind of what should they be looking for? What kind of questions should they ask? Yeah. So there are fractional. Um, you know, a lot of it can be to an extent self-service. When you're starting out, if it's just small questions, I recommend Sherm. I mean, the Department of Labor website is free. Really? Anyone can go on there. There's not one HR person that they say they are. I, I would question if you tell me you know every law by heart for every state. We all go on there. It's bookmarked. I, I encourage anyone to go on there and just look at what you're able to do. But for specific things about culture and stuff, I mean, just, just get out there. LinkedIn, mm. there's so many different podcasts, there's books, mm. there's things you can do to just kind of self-teach before you're ready to make an investment for a full-time person. I. I know there are HR shared services, there's some consulting and such. If you have that in your budget and you want to bring someone in, it, it can help. But when you're talking about building culture, that's hard to do with a consultant. Mm. If the consultant doesn't have skin in the game, they're not going to be there long term. I understand that you can translate to them what you want and they can kind of help guide you, but don't rely on that solely to mm. build it out for you and then they're gone. That just I feel like that's an awkward kind of way to do it. So I would say just limit how you're going to be using the consultants and such and just know that that's not the great I've got them and I move on over here and they're going to handle it. Mm. You're going to see a disconnect. Is HR the kind of the tip of the spear for culture? I think it's, I wouldn't say tip of the spear. I would honestly say the tip of the spear is just leadership in depth. Uh, CEO and such has to help drive that culture. Right. It can't just come from HR. So I, I would say probably not the tip, just solely no. Mm. Because if HR is trying to build a certain culture, but you don't have the CEO behind it, you don't have the uh, leadership team behind it, it's not going to work. Right. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's you know, all these, uh, many MSPs are, you know, the great engineer who decided to make a company, so they're good at that. Mm -hmm. They're not good at, I was talking to Peter Pajal, they're not good at finances, they're not good at sales and marketing, they're certainly not good at HR. It's very, very difficult to get all of these skills in one area. And just culture, because nobody's going to want to stay or work at a place that doesn't have that culture fit. Right. And so with that, um, you know, I think sometimes when you're building a company, especially let's say you have an engineer who's already company, to your point, all of those skills are, are not their strengths, but they think, I can't make an investment for a CHRO. Right. You don't have to. You can make an investment if you just have an HR manager. They can help you start to think about things the right way. Now, they may not be able to drive the full strategy to the extent that you want, but you may not be ready for that yet either. Mm -hmm. But they can help at least ask the right questions get you thinking in a way that your mind doesn't actually think, but now it pushes. And so I think it's just be open to alternative solutions for figuring that out, but don't just say, well, I'm not good at it, I can't afford HR, so I'll just let it fall to the way back. Mm. Because that's the piece I think that gets missed sometimes, is there are ways around it. And then, of course, there are some, uh, some you know, employees that kind of, you know, have some questionable decisions in what they do, and then there's another part of HR that that can be so difficult, and CEO really doesn't want to take that on, or the owner doesn't want to take that on. And we've talked about some, you know, some things that employees have done in the past that have been questionable, and it's just it's it's such a necessary area, Keisha, yeah. that a successful business needs to have. It can be a time suck for yeah, a CEO, right. especially a CEO starting a company that has so many things going on. It can be a time suck because you have to approach it delicately. You have to approach it the right way, and sometimes that CEO may need that voice to tell them this isn't the person you've mm. got to move forward and you may sometimes just need to hear that from someone else and if you're a ceo let's say an engineer to our example we've been talking about and you've got a team of engineer or product or whoever working maybe all of you won't think like that because you just go 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 in that mode but someone's got to be there to say hey you know we need to look at this and we need to work mm. through it and what have you but it can be a time suck for sure so you know i was thinking 
ConnectWise sharing your DMSPs is cool, it must be really cool for you to say, okay, here's our products, here's what we do. Hey, here's our customers. It's nice to see what we're actually doing and how it's affecting them. From your perspective, it must be pretty interesting as well. Amazing. Yeah. And, my, and it was the third week that I started with ConnectWise when I went to Evolve and got to sit with the peer group. Ah. And that's when it was like, you know, the light bulb went off of this is what, you know, we need by mm. this is the partner interaction yeah. and everything. So I have not had that in my, you know, prior role. Oh. But I, I'm excited by it because I get to hear their challenges and it's, it creates that empathy. And as I'm talking to my team, sometimes. You know, sometimes it's, uh, there may be something going on. It's like, oh, why do we have to help out with this? Mm. Like, well, here's why, you know, but when you create that empathy, it's just, oh, man. I mean, you can just do so much. That's why I'm excited about Partner Fest, uh, you know, that we're doing tomorrow Friday and getting everybody involved. And it's just so helpful to hear what are our customers saying, what are their challenges, and what can we do to help, not just on the product side. What mm. else can we do? So, so very cool. Keisha, what's something that people, if they heard about you, would be pretty interesting or surprising? <laughs> um, I feel like there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, I always, uh, maybe, I mean, I didn't start off thinking I'd do HR as a forensic anthropology major mm. anywhere because I like bones and skeletons. Yes, and, you do. You know, death and anything like that. So uh, probably just wound up here and how did that happen? So they might be surprised by that. I think sure. people assume like business or HR, you know, some sort of a major track like that, but mine's a little different. Very different, very different. Yeah. Keisha, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. It's Thank been you. great. Yes, it has, I look, always. I look forward to continuing uh, our friendship. Absolutely. You Thank be well. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and or viewing Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations. Please share this episode with one or two of your friends who you think may benefit from the episode. Our website, www.joeypins.com. There you find lots of resources and you could join our mailing list. Please follow us on all our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Podcast information, the video version of our podcast is on YouTube. Please subscribe. Audio is on all major podcasting platforms. Please follow them. And if you like it, please consider giving five-star rating. Would really appreciate that. Thank you again for listening or watching Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations.